Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over an example problem where we're going to calculate activity as it relates to radioactive decay. Before we do that, please don't forget in the bottom right-hand corner of this video, there's a little red button there. Subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And also, don't forget, please leave me a comment. What do you think about the channel? What do you think about the video? And in this problem, we're going to be talking about activity. Now, I made a previous video where I went over an explanation. What is activity as it relates to radioactive decay? And you can link to that video in the upper right-hand corner. But in this video, we're going to calculate what is the activity of carbon-14. That is the radioactive isotope of carbon. That's the one that is used for radiocarbon dating for carbon-14 dating when you want to date the uh, a piece of, uh, figure out how old a piece of biological material is, such as a tree or a person or an animal. And we're going to figure out what is the activity of carbon-14 in one gram, in a one gram sample of carbon from living tissue. All right, now this is the equation that we're going to use. This is the equation that says that the activity at some time t is equal to the decay constant, which we'll talk about in a moment what the decay constant is, times the number of radioactive atoms or the number of radioactive nuclei that you have at that same time t. Okay, now let's just review really quick. Remember, there are three isotopes of carbon, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Carbon-12 and carbon-13 are stable. They are not radioactive. Carbon-12 is 98.93% of all the carbon. Carbon-13 is 1.07% of all the carbon. But even though if you add these two up, this adds up to 100%, there is still a very small amount of carbon-14 in there. That's the radioactive isotope, I said, that we use for radiocarbon dating. And it's such a small amount that we say that it occurs in trace amounts. But what we mean by that is in this case, it's one part per trillion. So that means that there is one atom of carbon-14 in every trillion atoms of carbon. So we want to figure out what is the activity of carbon-14 in a one gram sample of carbon. We need to know how many atoms of carbon-14 we have. That means we need to figure out basically how many trillions of atoms are there in a one gram sample of carbon. So we're going to do that right now. This may look a little bit like a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of stoichiometry, but we have a one gram sample of carbon and we want to convert that into the number of atoms of carbon in that one gram sample. And we are going to use the molar mass. And that is one mole of carbon is equal to 12 grams. So basically, we have one gram. A mole is 12. We have one twelfth of a mole. So we're just going to take one times one divided by 12. And we get that that is 0 0.0833 or 8.33 times 10 to the minus 2 moles. One gram is this many moles. Well, that's the number of moles, but we want to know how many atoms we have. So we're going to convert that number of moles into the number of atoms, and we can use, do that using Avogadro's number because we know that one mole of anything, even carbon atoms, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms. So we're going to multiply this value times this value divided by one, the way, however you want to think about it. And that means that in a one gram sample of carbon, there are 5.02 times 10 to the 22 atoms of carbon. That's not the carbon-14, that's in of all the carbon isotopes, the 12, the 13, and the 14. And we know that carbon-14 occurs as one per trillion. So we can figure out how many trillions we have, and then we'll know how many carbon-14 atoms we have. So we're going to simply divide this basically into a number of trillions, and we're going to do that by dividing by one trillion. So we have 5.02 times 10 to the 22 atoms. We know that there's one atom of carbon-14 per trillion. So when we divide that, we come up with that NT, or the number of carbon-14 atoms in one gram of carbon, is 5.02 times 10 to the 10th atoms of carbon-14. Okay, that's our NT. Now we have the NT, the number of radioactive nuclei that we have but we don't have the decay constant. The decay constant is simply calculated as the natural log of two divided by the half-life of the radioactive isotope. All right, now we are talking about carbon, carbon-14. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. So we're gonna simply take the natural log of two 
and divide it by this number except, or divide it by the half-life except, when we're talking about activity, activity is expressed in becquerels, that's the units, becquerels is the activity per second, okay? The number of decays per second. So that means we have to convert this number, whatever the half-life is, which is usually given in years, unless it's really short, then it can be given in seconds. But we have to convert this number of years into seconds, and we're going to do that down here, 5,730. There are 365 days in a year. There's 24 hours in a day. There's 60 minutes in an hour. There's 60 seconds in a minute. And you multiply that all across. 5730 times 365 times 24 times 60, and you get that there are 1.81 times 10 to the 11 seconds in 5,730 years. So we're going to substitute that in for our half-life. It's still the half-life, it's just expressed in seconds instead of years. You can express the half-life in any unit you want. And also I changed this because the natural log of 2 is 0 0.693. So take 0 0.693 divided by this value right here, which is the half-life, and you get that the decay constant for carbon-14, because every atom has its, every radioactive isotope has its own decay constant, because each one has its own half-life. But for carbon-14, it's 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12 per second. Okay, s to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. So now we have the number of radioactive nuclei that we have, we have the decay constant, and we can simply plug those numbers into our equation. Remember that the activity at some time t is equal to the decay constant times nt, which is the number of radioactive uh, nuclei that we have. We figured both of those things out. And we can just plug those values in. The activity is therefore 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12 s to the minus 1 times 5.02 times 10 to the 10 and you get that the activity of carbon-14 in a one gram sample of carbon that's taken from a living tissue. Remember, carbon-14 is always decaying, but you're always taking up more carbon-14 when you eat plants and when you eat animals. So therefore, the amount of carbon-14 in your body is constant, and therefore, its activity is constant. And that would be 0.1. 0 0.193 becquerels or 0 0.193 decays per second. All right, that's just for a one gram sample. If you have more, then the uh, activity would be more. If you have less, then the activity would be less. So, for example, if you had a kilogram of carbon, okay, then it would be a thousand times more because you have a thousand times more carbon, so then they have a thousand more. Activity, it would just be 193 becquerels, or 193 decays per second. Okay, so there you go. There is a quick example for calculating activity. That's a common problem that you have to do when you're talking about radiocarbon dating. We'll do a future video when we go through everything you need to know about radiocarbon dating. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought. And give me a thumbs up. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.